Is financing a car a bad idea? Have we as a society been persuaded to think of affordability based on monthly payments instead of actual cost and true value? Hi, I'm Kevin Hunter, also known as The Homework Guy and author of Is That The Best You Can Do? This video brought to you by YouTube's best channel on car buying and selling, courtesy of The Homework Guy team and our super high intensity training for car buyers. If you like The Homework Guy videos, check the merch shelf down below if you want to sport one of our cool shirts or hoodies like this one. There will always be debate on who you should buy a car from, car dealers versus private party sellers. We're not planning to debate that today. We're tackling a different subject. I'm talking about financing, period. Creating debt. Do you think of a car loan as a necessity? Yeah. If you're one of the people saying yes, you're also unlikely to have thought much about saving or investing or building personal wealth. You're also likely to be what is known as car poor, a term Aww. given to describe people who can barely make it financially and their bad decisions around car payments, car insurance, and car maintenance are largely to blame. With car manufacturers and car dealers pushing loans, car buyers got the idea that debt was suddenly an expected part of life. Today, people are spending far more than ever on cars, financing them almost entirely to the tune of nearly a trillion dollars. Not that many years ago, nobody would have ever thought people would be leaving a dealership thinking they got a good deal after financing a zero cash down 72, 84, or even 100 plus months on a car contract. Ego, emotion, and a huge misunderstanding of money has overtaken reason, logic, and truth. And this, my friends, is why the poor keep getting poorer and the rich get richer, and that needs to end. Today, we're going to talk about how you think of car purchases and to help you better understand how your car buying decisions you're making today could be damaging your financial future. Back in a moment, right after this message from the Homework Guy team. If you're a first timer on the Homework Guy channel, consider subscribing and leaving us a comment below. Add hashtag the Homework Guy if you'd like a response directly from Kevin or one of the Homework Guy staff members. We're always glad to help our loyal followers and the best part is there's no charge. You can also email the team at info at the with a specific question or if you'd like a free contract review, just black out your personal information and send it to us. We'd love to hear from you. Just be aware that we do get a lot of requests, so just be patient while you wait for a response. Back to you, Kevin. Today I'm hitting financing and whether or not you should be considering a car loan at all. If you still have questions after you've seen this video, well, I reserved a special spot for you right down in that comment section down below. Go ahead, use it. It's right down there. You'll get feedback from other buyers and the Homework Guy team checks back in often as well. We'll help set you straight. Are you ready for some serious discussion about car loans? Is financing smart? Well, let's take a look. Right now in America, there are nearly a trillion dollars in financed vehicles on the road. Before we include house payments or rent, a simple review of a budget stuffed with car payments and student loan payments should have you asking, with that much weight over your head, how does anyone actually start saving or investing or building wealth? Do you understand how it's possible to make yourself car poor for years to come? just by making bad decisions at a car dealership? To be fair, a car loan can be okay strategy for someone starting out. A young person who needs to get to work, has lower income, needs to start building credit history for other bigger things down the road. However, if this isn't your first rodeo and you're on your second, third, or fourth car purchase, needing car loans is a good indicator that you're doing a number of things wrong financially. And that's a problem. There's little doubt that this country is facing some interesting and challenging economic times. However, it is possible to not only get through uncertainty, but to even succeed beyond your wildest dreams while everyone else thinks that it's a disaster. This happens when you're financially smart, and dealerships don't particularly like financially smart people. So, let's assume for a moment that you're a very smart car buyer. Join me, will you? And we'll take a closer look at the kind of debt a car loan is. Is it a bad debt or a good debt? Here are four reasons a car loan is regarded as bad debt. Number one, cars depreciate quickly. Borrowing money to buy a rapidly depreciating asset and you're literally bleeding money. New cars will lose as much as 25% of their value in the first year and most of that happens just driving it off the lot. Number two, car loans have fairly high interest rates. Many car loans being written today have rates well above 6%. You're dumping most of your monthly payment right into interest, not principal. Combine this with the depreciating factor I just mentioned, and this is why car buyers are frequently underwater financially. Number three, cars can and should be paid for in cash with just a little planning. 
You know you're going to need another vehicle in the future. Why isn't it part of your monthly savings plan like right now, like a car payment in advance? If you say there's no way you can pay cash for a $50,000 vehicle, I'd simply ask, are you out of your mind? Why are you trying to buy a $50,000 vehicle when a $10,000 vehicle not only fits your need, but also fits your budget? Be smart. Number four, cars are only worth what they can give you. Out of every 2.4 vehicles sold at a dealership, one car buyer in America is getting nothing but financial headache, repossession, destroyed credit, and possibly even bankruptcy from their financed car. Who wants to sign up for that kind of outcome? Now, here are three examples of how a car loan could be a good debt. Number one, your car, truck, SUV might open doors to other opportunities. The right vehicle might expand your potential employment and earning market or grow your business. When it's for all the right reasons, a car loan might not be so bad after all. But don't just pretend that's what the vehicle is for. Actually put it to work. Number two, intelligent buying. A good vehicle choice can greatly reduce depreciation. Buying a three to five year old vehicle with low mileage without every imaginable bell and whistle on it, and you can get a car that beats the devastating depreciation factors of new cars. Buy cars that are great deals. Watch the Homework Guy videos on this channel and don't fall for the dumb stuff offered by dealers. Number three, good credit can change everything. If you have very strong credit, you can get great rates on a car loan, usually in the low single digits. However, just 19% of people have excellent credit from 800 to 850. 18% have very good credit from 740 to 799. And 21% of the population has good credit, 670 to 739. If you fit in one of those higher brackets, you're a much better candidate for a car loan that doesn't cost you an arm and a leg. If I didn't mention your credit category, car loan's probably not a really great idea for you. You might be thinking that this advice sounds a little Dave Ramsey-ish. A short time ago, I shared with my viewers that a longtime car sales trainer said that the hardest type of individual to convert into a good car salesman would be a Dave Ramsey worshiper. Think about that. A person who's financially savvy, who is financially responsible, makes a very bad car salesman. Now, all of that is true without implying for a moment that a car salesman is a bad or dishonest person. Beyond their training and the environment on a car lot, they sell stuff. They don't give you savvy financial advice, and they never will. Do you see the difference? For this reason, I want to take this opportunity right here today to remind some of you what you should be thinking about in the days ahead. Some of you are out car shopping right now. Well, good for you. Some of you will soon be car shopping. Good for you too. Some of you are going to wait and see what happens. Well, good for you as well. Wherever you're at with your car needs, let's discuss four things financially smart people don't do. Number one, they don't take out loans on depreciating assets. They don't saddle themselves with debt, especially debt that is connected to rapidly depreciating assets, like a car, truck, SUV. Number two, they don't finance long-term loans. They don't take out long-term loans. If they do, it's only to take advantage of a promotion and then rapidly pay it off. Or they take the shortest term possible and pay it off as quickly as possible as well. Either way, they dump the debt as quickly as possible. Number three, they don't allow extras to be tacked onto their car loan. If a smart person must finance, they also don't let anyone pack their car loan full of fluff and things that add no value to the vehicle if they ever need to sell it. And here's the thing, if you can't find it on a book out sheet like in Kelly Blue Book or NADA or Black Book or any car book value, you'll never see a penny of that money again. All gone, poof, up in smoke. Number four, they don't think of a car as an investment. Smart people don't think of a car as an investment like dealers try to tell you that it is. Certainly not in terms of what an investment actually is. Instead, they think of it as an expense. I say this based on a simple financial principle. Investments pay you. Expenses take money away from you. See the difference? Of course, there are exceptions to this, but I'm addressing the standard of good advice, not exceptions. A smart person doesn't do any of these things while uninformed people are lured into signing long-term loans at car dealers all the time just to get a lower payment because they think affordability is based on a payment book. Here's some great advice from a viewer who commented on our channel. Morgan W. writes about car dealers. You can forget all this headache and just buy a nice pre-owned car privately on Craigslist, Facebook Marketplace, eBay, or bring a trailer. Buy what you can actually afford. Do you really need a brand new car? Pay cash, stay out of debt. 
All you're doing is building negative equity on a rapidly depreciating asset. Well, Morgan, you hit the nail on the head. As I've already said, if there's anything you should always understand about a car dealer, no matter how good or honest the car dealer is, they sell stuff. Nothing your car salesman or dealer finance officer says should be understood to be financial advice or advice about protecting assets, no matter how many times they say it. If it actually was advice about protecting your assets, the advice would be run, run as quickly as you can and go buy a cheap car from your neighbor or anyone else. Just get out of this dealership. That would be financial advice and advice that would help protect your assets. If you find yourself in the precarious financial situation of being buried in a car loan, I can tell you what happened. You wanted a car and you wanted it right now. You didn't want to wait even when you were being pumped full of nonsense on a car lot you shut off that voice that was saying, there's no way this could be a good idea for me. This guy seems way too happy about the choices I'm making. That's a clue. Do you remember looking at the building you were in? Do you remember seeing this state-of-the-art, multi-million dollar facility that housed the dealership? Not all dealers are like this, just like not all casinos are built from gold. But was there anything about that building that was suggesting the poor owner sells deals at cost or is losing money on car deals like they virtually say to every customer who walks through the door? As comedian Bill Engvall says, here's your side. That amazing building you were sitting in tells you everything you needed to know about the validity of everything I said here today. The dealer is getting richer with every visit by a car buyer. Most car buyers walk away having signed their names to a recipe for financial disaster. I hope today you see the difference and you'll think twice about how hungry you ought to be for the latest greatest car on the market and instead ought to be thinking about what you can actually pay for out of your own pocket without pulling a car loan at all. If you take this advice today and use it, I've saved you more financial grief in the days ahead than you might ever be able to add up, but you'll always look back on this and thank me for it. As returning viewers know, there are tons of videos here on the Homework Guy channel that you can learn from. Some of you post questions in the comment section that we addressed on videos quite some time ago here on the channel. No problem doing that, but make sure you check out all the videos on the channel. We've gone to a lot of work to help you out. Use the resources we put out there for you. All right, if you learned something today and appreciated the video, consider giving us that great big thumbs up and leave a comment down below. Include hashtag the homework guy, share the video on social media with your friends, and make sure to join us on Facebook and Twitter too. We post notifications and other updates on our social media sites and answer car buyer questions there too. If you love what we do and want to say thanks with a tip, all the PayPal and Cash App links you see here will be easy to find in the description box down below. If you can't do a tip, no problem. You can say thanks by sharing our videos with your family and friends and by encouraging others to subscribe to the channel. That is huge. It's one of the most important things you can do as a loyal follower and viewer on the channel. We appreciate everything you do to help us out and getting that word out to defeat the bad guys still hanging on in the car business who haven't learned that fairness and honesty is the best business model. Thanks everyone for coming back. We'll see you on our next video. You guys rock. I'm Kevin Hunter. Until next time. Take care, everyone.